Joined here by Democratic State Senator Brittany Pedersen of Lakewood, key supporter of supervised injection sites. Last night, the mayor of Denver, Michael Hancock, sat where you're sitting and he backpedaled on what used to be his full support of these sites. Does that surprise you? I think that right now there's been a lot of pressure. People are trying to use this as a political tactic to draw fear for people. Unfortunately, um, this stigmatizes folks that are most at risk of overdosing and the people who uh, need our help the most. Uh, so it's actually really frustrating to see. Uh, I understand why he's raising some concerns. I think that it's our job to prove to Coloradans that we can do this well and that we can save lives. So Denver needs the state's permission to get past the nuisance ordinance. Are you still fully committed to putting that through the legislature this session? Well, we're continuing to talk with people. We're going to do this in a bipartisan way. The only thing that we have to do at the state level is create a, a pilot program and ensure that one site, if it moves forward, that they can't actually seize the property. So that's really the only state piece, is just that we can put parameters around what it looks like, what our expectations are, um, but ultimately it's just giving the, faci the faci uh, facility the protection to not be seized. You mentioned you want to do this in a bipartisan way. Does that mean bipartisan as in a conversation or bipartisan as in votes? Because Democrats would not need any Republican votes to put this through the legislature. But it's critical that we do this in a bipartisan way. And right now I have a Republican sponsor with me. Uh, we, this actually came out unanimously last year in the interim committee. And so uh, this is not a red or blue issue. These are really the people at the spectrum of the opioid crisis. They're at the most at risk of dying today. So the question is, how are we going to keep those folks alive who have really fallen through the cracks in every way? You're in the state Senate. Are you confident that you have the votes in the state Senate to get it over the hurdle there? So I think that, you know, there's a lot of misinformation being put out there and, and there's fear mongering and there's political tactics being used that are really unfortunate. And so I really appreciate you having me on here because um, it's, we need to bring this back to public safety and making sure that we're providing a space where people who are the most at risk of dying now, who have fallen through the cracks throughout this public health crisis, who started off with prescription drugs, uh, prescription opioids, 80% of folks who ultimately use heroin started off with a doctor's prescription. And so they are at the end, really, of their disease, and they've been left behind. And so we are, this isn't going to change whether or not they use, this is going to change whether or not they live, and that they ultimately have access to the treatment that they need, and that they're in front of the professionals that can, can give them the help that they de deserve. You say the word treatment, and you'll hear critics <laughs> say a supervised injection site is not treatment. Mm -hmm. But my understanding is it's not intended to be treatment. It's intended to keep people alive so that they might get treatment. Talk about the harm reduction aspect of this, because I feel like there's a lot of discussion around the word treatment, not so much around harm reduction. Yeah, well, just to get back to, it's both. It's keeping them alive today, but it's also about treatment. So when you talk about the people who right now would be affected by this pilot program, it would be, you know, we know statistically people will not go beyond three blocks to actually use one of these facilities. So people aren't gonna be coming in from other places to use it. It's not going to increase crime. It's people who are using now. So they not having the site means that they will continue to go to alleys, public bathrooms. Just recently we had a 17 year old barista find somebody dead in the bathroom. This is what's happening right now in Denver that is highly affected by this. Uh, so You're talking about the placement of the site. So the placement, so the placement would be somewhere where there's already use exactly. happening. I want to show you something I know that you're familiar with, and perhaps people have not seen. This is a mailer that was run against you in the recent election by your Republican opponent, Tony Sanchez. Uh, and uh, the imagery there on the one side talking about uh, putting uh, heroin injection sites in your neighborhood. Where should these sites go? So this is, it's important that this is about a, it's a local control issue. So this would only give authority for one site, a pilot program that would be overseen by CDPHE. Uh, this would only ensure that we would not seize the property if they were going to have health professionals there to make sure that these folks are not overdosing. Um, but it's not just about keeping them alive today, Kyle. It's about making sure that we're taking them out of the shadows bringing them into a place where they're treated with respect and dignity 
that when they are ultimately ready to get the help that they need, that we actually have somebody there that can help direct them. These are really, uh, you know, my mom suffered from an opioid addiction and she ultimately moved to doing heroin. I can tell you that I am the last person that would ever bring anything that would increase drug use of the thing that has devastated my family for decades. Um, and so my mom is an example. She was somebody who overdosed at a very high rate. These are drugs that are unpredictable on the strength. These are the, if you're using, if you're injecting drugs, you are at high risk of dying today. Uh, and my mom actually finally got the help she needed and she's been sober for a year and a half. If we don't actually keep them alive today, they don't have the chance of recovery. Uh, my mom is uh, somebody who is an example of what's possible when we actually give them the help that they desperately want. And your mom's sobriety is fantastic news. Um, so when we talk about where these sites go, and we just showed that mailer that was run against you saying in your neighborhood, is your community a good place for a supervised injection site, Lakewood? So no, it's, it would be in areas where there's a high percentage of people who are using injecting drugs. So there isn't um, an area in Lakewood where I think that this would be uh, actually successful. I think that this is in downtown Denver currently where we have the needle exchange site that's right across the street from the Capitol. There are, are already people who are going through this site. We have um, people who are already using. If we don't create this site, they're going to be in the parks, in the alleys, in the public bathrooms. It doesn't stop use. Have you had other municipalities privately reach out to you and express interest in doing this besides Denver? No, I think that everybody wants to see how this is actually implemented. This is really a partnership with law enforcement. This is a partnership with the community. This is about public safety and public health. Doctors here in Colorado, nationally and internationally support this because it reduces the spread of HIV and hepatitis C. It keeps people alive today and increases access to treatment ultimately. Clearly Republicans feel like this could be the kind of wedge issue that gun control was for them years ago when Democrats similarly controlled the legislature. And Republican House Minority Leader Patrick Neville, who's going to be on this program tomorrow, is already talking about recall campaigns against Democrats who vote for this. There were two Democrats recalled over gun control, a third one resigned rather than face a recall. You concerned about the prospects of a recall? No, so I think it's just a desperate attempt. Uh, they are trying to stop the bleeding from the backlash against what's happening nationally in the Republican Party. Uh, this is not an issue that is going to ultimately be front and center on why people vote a certain way. Not an issue where people are going to recall legislators. The climate is against them. Uh, completely different when recalls were happening when Democrats were in control. And in our closing seconds, I want to return to a question that I asked and I didn't hear an answer on. Do you have the votes to pass this in the state legislature? Well, so we're, we're continuing to work through that. Um, and like I said, this has to be a bipartisan solution. Uh, we need our friends across the aisle and highly affected communities to be there in support of this. It's important that we prove to Colorado that we can do this in a, a way that is going to save lives and going to actually decrease crime um, and so I think that there's a lot of questions out there. There's a lot of misinformation. I think that it's important to also point out that no tax dollars would be used for this. This is literally just saying that one site, the property wouldn't be seized. That is all we have to do at the state level to make, to give Denver this opportunity. And we'll continue to ask the folks in Denver where they might line up that private money. This is the start of a long conversation that will proceed through the session. And Senator Patterson, we hope that you'll come back. Thank you. I just want to say, it's, it's really unfortunate when people try to stigmatize some of the folks that are the most at risk right now of dying in an opioid crisis. So I think that it's appalling. And what I saw them do in Vancouver by stigmatizing folks who are you know, desperate for help on the streets who are suffering, um, it's unacceptable. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your view. Subscribe to the next YouTube channel and I'll buy you a beer. Am I actually buying them a beer? This could be a very poor idea. We need some terms and conditions. Offer subject to terms and conditions.